and what's going on Fontaine here VIP soundlab.com and in this tutorial video this is going to be just answering some questions I just got a question in regards to how to drag and drop your scenes from the uh, the software this is something that we've covered in the past but I'm gonna go ahead and do it because the member was requesting the video so to do this is really easy for example here's your uh, here's some scenes up here now one shortcut you might want to get familiar with on your hardware controller for example, if you hold down your shift key, you notice how, well, I'm on the MK1 right now. If you hold down your shift key, you notice how the loop button will light up. So if you tap on a loop button, you see how it's uh, looping the scenes. In other words, it, it's on this one scene here. Okay, but if I hold the loop button, it loops the whole entire scene. All right, so let's go ahead and let's do another one. So now I'm with the scene two. Now say if I tapped on pad three, hold down shift loop. So this is a great way when you're tapping on your pads. In other words, when you're scrolling through your scenes as I'm doing here, you, you're basically scrolling through your scenes. And no matter where you're at, you know, if you're working on the scene, you can hold this shift key, press loop, and then you automatic loop. Then when you hit the loop icon, you know, the playhead would start from the beginning. So let me jump back over here to scene one. So to answer your question, when you hold or rather when you grab a scene with your mouse you're holding down the left button okay so you notice when I start to move it like this it's giving me this little white line right here okay so in other words it's saying I can move that scene like so okay so that's pretty much putting it out of order so if you're getting stuck like that you can just take this put it back well you actually can put it anywhere I mean anywhere where you see that little white line appear as I'm doing here, that's how it's moving it around. Okay, so let's say if that's not what you want. To duplicate that scene, you hold down the, the control key. Okay, now when I move it, it's giving me a brand new scene. It's saying scene 11 hasn't been named yet. Okay, so you double click here and you name your scene like this. You know, you type in a name. All right, so it's basically copying this scene here. You see it's, it's saying intro all the way down. Why? Because the patterns that's in here is all set to um, intro. But if I'm over here, let's say on the sound, and I'm going down to this little icon right here where my patterns are, you know, here's some preset patterns that I have set up in here. You can see right here, I can scroll through them like this. Okay, let's say if I selected this one right here that says verse 2 8 bar. Verse 2 8 bar now appears right here in this new scene that we just made. Or another way you can do it, you can drag your little scenes around like this you know you can move them around this right here set them up however you want to set them up inside the software and you can do it that way too so then that way you can just arrange them however you want to arrange them if you wanted something new here you can just double click on that it makes pattern 11 this could be 12 13 14 15. all right so now you have all the scenes and you can right click in here and you can you can add your colors like so you know if you want this particular pattern to be this color here boom there you go all right so that's your patterns you have another icon right here this one is for your actual scenes themselves so again down here these are your patterns you set your pattern colors i should say and up here these are for your scenes you can assign your scene colors you see your scene colors they will be apply it up here in this little this little uh, scene arranger and down here is your patterns okay, so your patterns are colored down here and your scenes are colored up here so again control you grab a scene which again is going to copy all of these patterns down here and you just drag it over like that okay and your page navigation works like this if you press the navigate key Okay, you notice that you have uh, navigate and page navigation. Page navigation is just gonna allow you to scroll through your pages. For example, if you have a plugin open, for example, and you wanna scroll through your pages in your plugin, you can do that too. Like for example, let's say if I go here, select an external plugin. I'll pull up a plugin. And then I'll say I wanted to go through the pages of that plugin. I press page navigation. 
the pages in the plugin now show up. So I can scroll through it like this just from the hardware controller. So that's pretty much how that works. And another way that you can navigate, let me turn this plugin off. You have what's known as your regular navigation. This is your, your ranger. So your ranger, you can zoom in and out of that like this. If you want to get a more detailed view, for example, you can see the beats in your bars right there. Whereas like this, it's just kind of hard to see. So the more you zoom in, there's eight bars zoom in a little bit more and it gets a little more detailed. It gets a little more sophisticated with the showing the actual uh, beats in each bar. And you can do the same thing in your pattern below as I'm doing here. So let's say if you need a, you need a less view, a more detailed view, if you need to scroll through your view, you can scroll through your view like this. You can see what's going on inside of your mix. If something's out of place. If you're looking for that one little tricky sound that's sounding off, that's a great way to zoom in there, see what's going on as well. Or you can do them both at the same time like this, as you can see here, see this? So you can navigate and zoom anywhere. Independently, completely independent, zooming in and out. Another thing you might want to get familiar with, and I don't want to get off subject, but let's say on your hardware controller, okay, here's some patterns down here. Okay. This is the pattern that's saying intro. You have a select button on your hardware controller. That button and lock that screen in. You're going to notice that you're going to have an event button. Okay. Select your event button and you're going to notice you're going to have start and end. So from right here to right here, this is one bar, two bars, three bars, four bars. So let's say if I just wanted to affect what's in this, um, this pattern right here up to these, these first four bars. And I'm gonna scroll it back a little bit. Exactly at five, one, one. Now you notice how these uh, MIDI notes are getting highlighted here. That's because it's selecting that event. In other words, if I wanted to, if you look on your right hand screen, you can control the length of that like so. Okay. The pitch of it, you know, if you just want to do individual notes, you can just roll your event key like this. This would be event one. This would be event two, event three and event four. So let's say if I had, I just want to move this note right here on event three. Now, again, you're not in your multi mode, you're in your event mode where it says position. Okay. I can roll that, you know, wherever I want to have it in the track, and you notice below you have the velocity, uh, this little guy right here. You can control the velocity also with the last knob on the right hand screen. So you can control your velocity, the position, as well as the length of a note. So that's something, you know, you might want to get familiar with. Another way you can do it, you can select all, for example, which can control every single MIDI note that's on the screen. I can move every MIDI note like this, control every MIDI notes length. I want to do it like this. As you can see like this here, you know, or the velocity for each one or rather all of them. It's kind of like a global multi-event or I can select none, which would turn them all off. Or let's say I want to just scroll up and down, just do them individually. You have an up and down key where you can scroll through your, uh, your sounds in your kit like this. So that's one way you can do it. Another thing you might want to get familiar with, I'm going to exit the select key now and you have the ability to also erase your MIDI notes in real time. You have this little, um, you see that little white playhead moving. In other words, I'm moving it left and right with the steps. Okay. Th this is, these are what's called steps. So let's say if I'm over here and I'm holding down the erase key with the pad, See how I erase that? Or if I fast forward it, I can jump over here. If I want to back it up a little bit. Now notice how it's playing in real time. 
and I'm moving it around, I'm backing up, and I'm like, hey, look over there, number three just got erased. See, I just did that. Now, say if I'm on this this guy right here, sound two, I'm pressing the, the playhead back and forth, again, forward, backwards. Let's say if I want to skip over that, let's say if I could jump over that one and jump all the way back. Boom, I'm skipping that one. Here comes another one. Boom, I'm jumping over that one. You see what I mean? Back it up, jump over that. If I leave it alone, boom, it's gone. Boom, it's gone. Let's back it up. Let's grab the other one. Skip past it. Boom, got it. <laughs> you see what I'm, you see what I'm saying? So that's something you want to get familiar with. And another thing you can do is like, okay, let's see. Let's say right here, this is saying sound one through seven. Here's eight. Here's nine. Okay, here's ten. So let's say. I wanted to erase these sounds that's on these pads fast and easy way. One way you normally would just right click here and you know you can assign your colors, you can export the MIDI, import the MIDI, or you could press reset. So another way you can do it is on your hardware controller, hold down shift plus erase. Okay. When you hold down shift and erase, you notice how the loop button lights up as well as the steps left and right. But if I tap on the pad like this, Boom, the sound is now erased. If I go to two, boom, three, four, five, six, seven. And boom, I just erased all the MIDI notes just by holding shift and erase. So if I wanted to come over here, let's say if I was over here in a kit and I wanted to load up a kit or whatever, and then come over here and then drag and drop some sounds, I can grab a sound and then drag it and drop it over here and start brand new. Or another way you can use your browse button and browse it that way. Let's say if you had something loaded up and he's like, nah, I like what I had. Okay, no problem. You press control Z and we bring those guys right back as you can see I'm doing right here and bring the MIDI notes back. Boom. Simple as that. Control and Z. All right. So that's something you want to get familiar with. That's just going to, you know, help improve your workflow as far as navigation. And I figured that was something really important to mention uh, other than over here under your file menu under your preferences. Let's go ahead and go over something really quick. Under Here's your factory library, here's your user library. You'll notice now Machine 2.2, they also added a native instruments user content and they also added a standard user directory here under the user tab, which kind of threw me off when I first seen it because I was like, okay. But it makes sense because let's say if you had some projects being saved, okay, so when you select this icon here and rescan the content, whatever's in that folder, under your projects, under your project list, those will get rescanned and refreshed. So let's say if you're over here under, you know, projects, you know, your groups, your sounds or whatever, and you erase something out of there or something got out of place, that's a great way to rescan that and those projects will come back. Or if you're cleaning up your library, if you're removing files, same thing with your standard user directory, you know, cause you have, Okay, again, these two icons here, user and native instrument. So it's just, a, it's, I think it's a great tool because if you, if you accidentally, you know, remove something out of here or something gets out of place, you move a folder or whatever, or you just don't want something in there no more. You know, if you got some clutter over here, you want to, you know, get neat and organized. I think that's a neat little um, feature to rescan. I think it'll, it'll also bring back like old tags and and stuff like that. So you got to be careful with it. You know, if, if you're cleaning up your library and you want to keep it nice and neat, then I would say probably don't mess with it because <laughs> it might bring back, you know, some garbage or something over here. So if you don't want any garbage or anything over here, you know, just make sure that, you know, you have everything set up correct. But even if you did, you can always come in here under your tags, for example, and you can hit your edit icon like this right here. And you can go in here and whatever kit you're on, you can unselect these tags anyway you know, under your properties, whatever the case is, if you need to clean up your library, you know, you just come in here, you select whatever you need to select or rather highlight these sounds. You know, I'm not going to do it on here cause I don't want to mess up my library. But for example, shift, if I did all these here and then I came down here and unchecked these little tabs here, then boom, it will basically just erase that out of there. And then your tags will disappear. And then you can come back and just, then you can just come back and just do them over. So that's pretty much how, you know, that works. But again, I thought that was a pretty cool little feature that they added in there. Other than 
your plugin menu. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this. This is just when you're adding your plugin locations. You can set up default configurations. You know, if you have a certain you know configuration that you want to have set up, you know, down here, you know, when, when your plugin icon is selected, you have the ability to save, you know, certain setups. Locations, everybody knows that. That's obvious. That's just basically wherever you're you're putting your uh, plugin content. For me, I leave mine in one specific folder because I don't like to have a bunch of folders in here and say, hey, this is here and I got to sit and rescan this guy here and rescan that and rescan this. Nah, I just leave mine in one uh, machine to library plugins. I keep all mine in there. So when I press rescan, I'd rather just do it in one shot. And plus, if, you know, it, it just eliminates the guesswork of where anything is. So, um, yeah, man, other, other than that, all this we've, we've covered in previous tutorial videos, other than we have this um, auto enable when, when recording feature. I believe I covered that in the 2.0 video. If I'm not mistaken, you can select this on and off. So when you hit the record button, it will uh, automatically enable it like this here. So it's getting ready to play on or off like that there. So let's say if I press play now, but if I turn this guy off, it doesn't do it. See? So that's all that is. You know, I'm just making sure I'm covering all the bases here. Cause I know, I know that you're new and you also can control the metronome volume there. So let's go ahead and the signature here. So that's pretty much how you can get that set up. Here's the input quantized so that your notes get automatically uh, quantized. All right. So other than that, we've covered all this in the previous tutorial videos. So again, troll, drag, you can copy your scenes like that. So I guess that's pretty much it. I hope that answered your question. If you have any questions or concerns, be sure to hit me up. It's Boy Fontaine, VIPSoundLab.com. Peace.